you hear the condom music? Did you dance into that too? Listen. That's what I was talking about. Like. See what I'm saying? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Coach My Life weekend live interview series. I am here, your vision coach, Latoya Early, here rocking out with her girl, the Chase Gray Coach My Life weekend concierge, Jasmine. We are here to bring you another amazing night of interviewing as we are talking to um, grief coach Elise tonight. It's going to be super awesome. And we're going to have a good, a good conversation about diagnosis and things that you could be diagnosed with in your whole adulthood. Because I think I should probably get in this conversation with this with what I shared earlier. Is that considered a diagnosis? I think so, because I have to manage my time. We'll talk about it. So listen, ladies, I hope that you are ready. Do us a favor and share this broadcast. If you know someone who was recently diagnosed or even diagnosed as a child with sickle cell, um, rheumatoid arthritis, I say I mess it up all the time, um, fibromyalgia, whatever has been something that may have been diagnosed that's considered a chronic illness, make sure you tag them in this um, live today, this discussion tonight, because we're going to talk to grief coach uh, Elise and she's going to really enlighten us. So I hope that you're ready. I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic over to Jay so she can introduce our speaker for tonight. And Listen. maybe I'll keep quiet. Last Tuesday, I was quiet. I might not be quiet today. That That's was a saying. fluke. That's that was a fluke. So listen, I promise y'all, I am really was ready, but then I'm like, oh, let me go share this on my page. So you see me looking over here because I'm really trying to share it. But if you know me, you know that I'm not very technologically savvy. So it's not really happening how I want it to happen. I'm a little confused right now. Like, I don't think Latoya made it possible for me to share it. I don't know because I can't. Um, well, I'll look into that as you're bringing up, Jay. Thank you. As okay, so Jay. let me talk about the lovely, the beautiful. Um, so listen, she'll kill me, but she's like the baby of the bunch. But just because she's the baby of the bunch, it does not mean she's any less powerful than anyone else within our community. Um, she is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful person. And I'm so excited to bring up and bring to you guys Elise Perry, the one, the only Elise Perry. She is... Hi, Hi she is our grief coach. So I'm going to give a little bit of Elise's bio. She is... Um, a grief coach and she, well, she's going to probably tell y'all that part. I don't want to read her uh, power statement, but I am going to say that she is a wife and a sickle cell warrior and a lover of shoes. My girl, that's my <laughs> friend. Um, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. She has experienced a lot in her life, losing her father when she was 11 um, and her mother when she was 23 and her grandmother when she was 25 caused her to become hospitalized after each death. And she's learned that grief was a huge trigger for her. So some people grieve the life that they had prior to their diagnosis. And she never knew what that looked like And so, because she was born with sickle cell. So her goal is to help women through their grieving process after a diagnosis and to create some type of normalcy that works for them to manage their time and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Welcome, welcome, Elise Perry. Hey, y'all. Hey y'all. Hey Elise. <laughs> hey, can y'all hear me? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We can hear you. We can hear you. Um, I listen, you know, listen, you see who, who commented. You knew she was gonna be here to, to uh to support her baby. Hey, Miss Sandra, we see you in the audience. Uh okay, Elise. So let's get started right away because this is a conversation I have been waiting to have. I've been like super excited, waiting for you. Not that listen, other coaches. Not that I wasn't excited to talk to you guys, but I've been anticipating the conversation with Elise for so many reasons. So Elise, before we begin, I know I gave a little bit of your bio. Can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Yep. So I am a grief coach. I help millennial women living with a chronic illness, create work-life balance and self-acceptance and accountability. And just like Jazz stated, um, I was diagnosed with sickle cell. When I was born and just living with um, sickle cell anemia just has showed me, you know, different ups and downs and just different trials, different um, tribulations, and also just losing three major people 
in my life. And after losing each one of those, being hospitalized um, after each death and just realizing that um, that was a trigger for me. And then even around their anniversaries of their deaths and their birthdays, I will um, have a flare up um, or even be hospitalized because those um, dates, anniversary dates are triggers for me. Mm. Mm. So grief is a trigger for you. That's, that's, uh, do, have you, I can understand grief being a trigger. I can definitely yeah. understand it because you're going through so many different emotional um, ups and downs and, you know, concerns and you're probably like reliving the past and memories and things like that. And we know that stress is a trigger um, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. So that's a very stressful time. So I can understand yeah. grief being a trigger. Um, I'm excited because your, your workshop is winning after diagnosis, right? Yeah. So tell us about what it was like for you, because one of the things that you talk about that I just read was that you don't know what life was like before diagnosis. So life has always been this way for you. So yeah. understanding that, um, how do you think or or what can we expect from you at the at the conference? What can we expect during your workshop? So because, like you said, I was. Um, born with sickle cell anemia. However, some people are not born with a diagnosis. Sometimes they are um, diagnosed in their 20s or sometimes even in their 40s. And, you know, for them, this is a shocker. This is something that hits them and it's just like they don't understand what's going on. So they can expect to be empowered. Um, they can expect to be educated and they can expect to be um, elevated, especially in their mindset. So when I talk about educate, the educational piece, just learning what grief looks like and understanding that grief is different for everybody. And then also it comes in waves. It comes in and nobody experiences grief the same or in the same cycle. So there's five phases of grief, but sometimes someone may experience step five before they even experience step one. So I'll educate them on the grief cycle and then also just being empowered. So we talked about me um, losing my mom, me losing my dad, and me losing uh, my grandmother. So when I lost my father, I was 11 and I was hospitalized. I was in the hospital for approximately three months. And mm -hmm. part of that time I was in ICU. And the doctors didn't think I was gonna make it. So they called my family. And at that time, my brother was living in Philly. So he had to fly in because the doctors did not think I was gonna make it. So, I just want to empower people that have a diagnosis to let them know that that diagnosis does not determine or dictate what you can and what you're able to do. Then I fast forward to going to college when I wanted to study abroad. I had one of the professors tell me, well, I don't think that's a good idea. You studying abroad because of this chronic illness you have. Well, I studied abroad and, you know, I did those things. So once again, I just want to empower people to let them know, don't let man determine or let this illness determine and dictate you starting that business or you going to school or you know going for that promotion and then also elevation and elevation in your mind because your mindset is really my mindset anybody mindset is really what helps you you know stay the course and stay you know focused because I used to walk around woe is me or why me so I really had to understand in my mindset that yeah, this is what I have. I battle with this, but what's my purpose? And this is my purpose to make sure that everybody understands that your diagnosis or whatever it is that you are going through does not dictate, does not stop you, and that you can still continue to go and fight. Absolutely. You are bigger than your diagnosis. So yeah. I love that. I'm excited because you said a lot of good things in there. Um, understanding like the five stages of grief. I don't think we all understand that there are five stages of grief. Um, not to, Well, I mean, it's not anything that they couldn't look up, but can you maybe walk us through what those five stages are? Yeah. So you have denial and isolation. You have anger. You have bargaining. You have depression. And then the last stage is acceptance. Mm. And so you said earlier, like sometimes you, there is no sequence to those. Those can kind of happen for you um, at any given time. And why do you think that is? Um, just because like everybody is just different. And, you know, sometimes 
we have to come to terms with what's going on. So sometimes in the beginning, you know, you are in denial that you have been diagnosed and you're like, no, this, that ain't true. You know, like I'm not believing it. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, we often correlate grief with losing someone. And honestly, grief is not always losing, you know, a loved one or someone. Like I said, it's, you know, can be losing yourself. So even mm-hmm. when a person, even when a person dies, you're still in that denial stage. Like, no, nope, I don't believe it. They still there. Some people want to call and text and things like that and just think that they're still there. So just because I really believe that we are all just wired different. And like I said, it just comes in waves. And sometimes, you know, we may be angry, like in the beginning when we're diagnosed, you know, why, why is this, why am I being diagnosed? Why do I have to go through this, you know, that anger part? So it just really just comes, like I said, in different um, areas in different ways. Can, can I add, can I say something about the whole grief component? Um, what's, <laughs> what I just, I just kind of really want to, you know, recognize this piece is that a lot of people who may have been diagnosed at birth, may have been diagnosed later on in life, they may not consider the diagnosis or the acceptance of their new reality as a grieving process, right? Correct. And so just... As we, you know, we've worked together, we, we, we know your message, we know your story, we know all of that good stuff. But one thing that I have learned about anyone who may have been diagnosed, again, whether or not it was at birth or later on in their life, is that any time, and, and even with this, with you saying that you were born this way, how is it that Elise still had a, grieve it, a grievance when she was born this way? What about the realization that life doesn't look like someone else right Mm -hmm. or that my life will no longer look like what it what it once did or what I assumed it to look like because of the different alterations that I have to make personally and so just just kind of bringing that to surface and how you know that was kind of an eye-opener for me because I never would have thought that someone had to grieve that transition and what that would feel like if I was a, you know, a working mom and, you know, doing, doing this, doing that. And then I'm starting to notice that my health is changing. I go to the doctor. I'm told these, you know, these symptoms and these issues are due to X. And now I have to make this huge adjustment. That grieving process is important because I think that we go from, you know, being okay to knowing that things are getting ready to change and we just want to change versus allowing ourselves to go through that process. Absolutely. Because it's funny when she had mentioned it, like um, having to grieve you, like having to grieve the loss of who you were or who you once were. Um, I hadn't thought, I, I hadn't considered that, that um, if it's later in life for you, there is a there is the you before the diagnosis and then the you now and so you have to grieve the loss of who you were um but i think that's what elise is going to be work helping us work through right understanding how to process um that change right elise yes okay so um just like what toya stated when like noticing when you know that acceptance piece or understanding, like for me, I was young. So, and weather and cold weather, cold weather and temperature changes um, trigger my crisis as well. So for me, I was young and it would be a hot day outside and people were playing outside in the sprinkler, my friends were, and it was like, I couldn't do that. So when I'm trying to process, why can't I go run in a sprinkler? But, you know, my grandmother shielded me um, not wanting me to have to deal with the consequence of what may happen if I go play in that sprinkler. So mm-hmm. it was really understanding and accepting, like, you can't do what they do because this may lead to a flare-up. And then also, as what LaToya stated, as, you know, having, you know, starting your career, fresh out of college, and say you are diagnosed with a chronic illness, now you have to figure out what does that look like for me? And how do I have that conversation with my supervisor or HR and let them know and what that plan is for you? So you really just have to understand, like you said, the acceptance piece and understanding that, yes, this is my new life and just taking that time to go through it and accepting what it is and what it looks like for you because your normalcy is now not like everyone else's and finding what normalcy looks like for you. 
I seen her come off, so go ahead. Look, I got one more question for you. So my question is, and, and, and I'm sure there are listeners, you know, in the audience who may have this same question. Going to your employer to say, this is who I am. You know, these are some of the issues that I may come up against. Did you feel afraid? How did they, you know, how did you handle it? What were your emotions and how have your employers handled it? So for a long time, honestly, I was embarrassed um, to talk about it. But also when I have a flare up, um, even some people that may have lupus, they have a rash. So that's something outer that people can see. And for me, my eyes are jaundiced, meaning that I may be sickling. And so honestly, it came up one day, my eyes were jaundiced and another coworker asked, you know, what was going on? And I explained it. My supervisor at the time had lupus as well. So she was more understanding. However, that's not always the case. So for those that may not be able to connect with their supervisor in that aspect, I'm open and I'm honest. And I tell, you know, I had that conversation, ask, can I speak with my supervisor? and have that conversation with them like, hey, I do have a chronic illness. This is what it is. Sometimes, some days I may not, you know, be able to come in and figure out what that call-in process looks like. That's the first thing I go to in the handbook, what, what the call-off process looks like, because I need to know. And um, now that um, I have more of a stable job, um, because when I first graduated, it was not really, you know, stable. I have FMLA and I have long-term disability. So I, um, for the long-term disability, I'm still able to get paid. And for FMLA, mm -hmm. it just secures my job. So what I what I love is that, and, and we're definitely going to move forward, but what I love <laughs> is, so, and I'm, I'm telling all of Elise's business, I know it's okay. <laughs> In her membership, so Elise has a membership for women who are, you know, looking for that support, right? And so to have this type of insight, to have this type of, you know, information, how do I go to my boss when I'm uncomfortable? How do I overcome my fear or my embarrassment? How do I so to be connected in the community, you know, the community that Elise is offering to women to support you in these areas just sound so needed because just thinking personally, if I was in that position, I wouldn't know how to speak up for myself or be an advocate for myself and not allow people to tell me how I feel or to tell people, tell me that, you know, it's not that serious. You know how employers can be. So I appreciate you and I appreciate what you offer um, to your community. Thank you. I'm done jazz for now. <laughs> First of all, I didn't say anything. I was thinking it, um, but since we're on the same page, she probably read my thoughts, but no, it was funny. Cause I was going to ask you like how, what, recommendations or what feedback um, or how would you tell someone who's maybe private, you know, who maybe is embarrassed by it, who doesn't want to necessarily um, tell their business. Cause that's how you look at it. like, it's my business. It's personal. Um, Cause I know for me personally, like I don't want anybody to like take pity on me um, mm -hmm. because that's what you almost feel like once you begin to say it. Um, and some people don't say it because when you say it, it becomes real. But sometimes I don't want to say it because I don't want people to look at me differently and treat me differently um, because I can't lift a certain amount or I can't do certain things. And I remember, you know, just sharing with people that I felt comfortable with. Um, well, this is what's going And it's funny because the same thing for you where I was having a flare up and a coworker was like, are you OK? Because you keep moving funny. And I'm like, well, let me just tell you my business. So, you know, I had to share with her what was going on. But then it's like the kid gloves came on and then she was like so gentle with me and so kind with me and like a little different with me. And I had to be like, bro, listen, can you stop doing that to me? Because I don't want to be treated differently. So I think um, in some sense, like people are afraid to say anything because they don't want to be treated differently, even though. I am different. You know, I am a little different. I do have, you know, something that's going on with me. Um, but I don't want you to still feel like you can't invite me or you don't want me to come or, you know, you want to make my plate for me at the at the luncheon. Because um, don't make my plate because I don't need everybody food anyway. So uh, <laughs> just give me what came from the restaurant. But <laughs> I'm just saying, don't make my plate. But you don't want that type of kid glove experience. I say all the time, people put on kid gloves with you when you're sick. And so I love the fact that you have this community um, that helps women, um, that will help the women who have 
you know, been diagnosed with understanding how to deal with the day to day. Tell us about your community and how um, we could connect with your community if we were interested. Okay. So my community is called E Inspires um, Academy, and it goes back to those bases that I um, shared in the, in the beginning, feeling empowered, um, elevating, and being educated. So being educated on, you know, FMLA and long-term disability, everybody's not aware of what their job offers for them. So um, educating on them, them on that and how, you know, to find out if your job does offer that and empowering them to be confident in who they are and speak up for themselves because you know sometimes that that was me you know being embarrassed don't want to be pity but i had to understand that it's it's not pity sometimes they may really just honestly care and want to make sure that you are okay you know and it's not pitying you and then um you know also just elevating in that mindset and um you know like i stated not walking around woe is me and why me but understanding that you know, looking at it as an, in a different perspective and making sure that, yes, we have this diagnosis and yes, we have this illness, but it's greater purpose, you know, and being able to share that with somebody else to encourage the next individual. And you can be involved and um, enroll into my um, academy through, um, I have a link on my social media page and it's actually through uh, Mighty Networks. If you go to my, it's einspires.mn.com and you can find it that way. It is a monthly um, fee. And, you know, being involved and just getting that support and being around other like-minded individuals, women especially, who understands what you're going through, who can also uplift you and actually know what it's like to be in that spot, to be in that hospital bed, to be in a flare-up and to, know what it's like to honestly feel alone sometimes because yes my sister is gonna be there for me because that's my sister but she honestly don't understand what it's like to be in pain to have to depend on these medications to make sure that i'm out of pain you know so my sister that's my sister she loves me she's gonna be there mm -hmm. but this person that has an illness that has this diagnosis understands what it's like to be looked at in a certain way to look, you know, be judged because, oh, I'm not wearing it outer, so I don't look sick. You know, that person who has a chronic illness understand what that feels like. So you'll be around other individuals that actually understand that. Yeah, I, I'll say it's amazing to have conversations with people who have shared have shared experiences, um, yes. who understands what it feels like when you wake up and feel like your body has failed you. Like, yes. wow. Then that's what it feels like. It feels like when you wake up, like your body has failed you today or you failed your body. Like what one of those things has happened and I have to go through this by myself. So I love that there is a community where you don't have to feel like you are going through this by yourself. I see the microphone has come off again. <laughs> because I sure hope that Elise has a special portion in her training for the Coach My Life um, weekend, for her membership for women who are a little prideful and stubborn and you know they don't they don't want people to help them and they don't want to tell anybody because they don't want to feel like they're they're wearing the child glove or whatever <laughs> glove they're wearing <laughs> because again I, I like that you're saying it's not that you know we're putting on the the child glove is that we love you and we want to support you or whoever you know co-worker family member whatever the case may be and allowing someone to help you even in those moments that you are, that you do feel a little weak, that it's okay. Um, so again, just want to bring that to the surface because a lot of women feel like that. Like, I don't want to tell anybody because I don't want them to make me feel like a child. Like they have to mm -hmm. monitor me and mm -hmm. I get that. But how do you break free from that thinking so that you can build the village around you needed to support you in the times that you need that additional support? Absolutely. Elise, are you must go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say absolutely, because I wanted to make sure that um, we talked about that, because I know that part of what you talk about in the conference is going to be overcoming that mindset. And so for the people who are here, who are watching and want to understand what we're talking about, we are talking about the Coach My Life weekend. 
Um, and if you are just joining us or you're watching the replay, we're talking about the Coach My Life weekend, which is December 3rd through the 5th. And Elise is a grief coach and she is on the panel and she will be teaching about winning after diagnosis. And so um, a lot of what we're talking about today is about you as an individual maybe being diagnosed, but what about those pe those family members who, although they haven't been diagnosed, um, they've had a personal experience with a family member who has been diagnosed, um, or so you know, and they're grieving the loss of the life that they had prior to. Um, what type of with that person? So now, my mom has been diagnosed, or my sister has been diagnosed, or my friend has been diagnosed, and so I need to be able to support them differently. Um, what what would you say to the people who have they're not diagnosed, but their loved one is? So. Um, it's, it's the same, you know, it affects everybody, it affects the whole household, but still treat them the same, you know, and like Jasmine said earlier, I still want to be invited, like, <laughs> don't just dismiss me because you feel like I'm a cancel, but I may cancel, but still make me feel included and still, you know, if you feel that that person may pay attention to their triggers as well have that conversation with them but also still allow them to do things don't just handicap them all together and maybe they are showing signs of flair but then step in but allow them to have that conversation with you or allow them to say or you know communicate that with like oh today i'm not able to do it and then step in but still allow them to do what it is that they need to do and still you know still be there for them still you know just and educate yourself about it and understand what it's like for them, but don't assume, just don't assume altogether. Like I said in the beginning, don't just dismiss them. And, you know, it's hard. It's hard for everybody. You know, it's a change for them and it's a change for you. So honestly, you're both going to be on this change um, together. So learning together. So understanding that there are different dy dynamics to diagnosis, um, who would you say your workshop at the conference is for? So although I coach millennial women, I feel that everyone, a woman, man, can learn because not only are we diagnosed with chronic illness every day, but we're also mental health. Um, you know, if there's depression, there's anxiety, and then we are still in a pandemic, there's COVID. So People can learn and use these steps as well to learn how to deal with those other diagnoses as far as anxiety, as far as depression. I myself deal with situational depression. Holiday season is here. You know, people are spending their first holidays without a loved one. It's hard. So you can use these steps and you can use this education and, you know, apply that to your life as well. So it can be for women. It can be for men as well that are experiencing a diagnosis or experience in a change and may not have been diagnosed, but kind of, you know, speaking to themselves like, hmm, my mood has been a little different. I haven't been wanting to be bothered or I just want to be by myself, you know, and using those, the educational pieces and the, um, the things that I would teach as well to uh, imply in their life and apply to their life. Absolutely. You said something that was uh, big, seasonal depression. Um, seasonal depression is a real thing that people experience okay. during different seasons. And this is one of those seasons that are, that's approaching with the holiday season, um, because some people, like you said, are experiencing, um, you know, the first holiday without a loved one or just the holiday season um, where no. there is a missing loved one. So, yes. you know, it's Thanksgiving and, you know, my, my, my mother's not here or it's Christmas time. And, you know, my, my family's, you know, I'm missing a loved one. And so I think that's a big big thing. And I, and I don't think I've thought about that, um, even in regards to needing this conference, because that's a real thing. And so this will be a great opportunity for you to come into the weekend. Um, if that's something you're experiencing, because the goal of this entire conference is to help you win after there has been a betrayal, after a diagnosis, after bereavement, you know, so we're going to be talking to one of our other coaches about winning after bereavement and winning after broke and winning after abandonment. And so during this time, this is a perfect conference for you to attend so that you can understand um, how to move into that holiday season differently. Yeah. So that when you come out on the other end of that, you're not going in week W-E-A-K, but you're going because your week will end 
at this conference. I think Ms. Sandra said it the best, the weekends, that particular weekend. So we really want to see you there um, during that time frame. So I know that you are newly married. Yes. <laughs> you are newly married to Dre, my yes. little brother. <laughs> I love so much. Um, so how has that been, that transition um, of marriage um, in your diagnosis? And, you know, how has that been? So Dre and I have um, been friends for a long time. <laughs> so even though we were friends before, I, you know, as Coach Latoya say, it's the whole pride thing. I have friends that know what, you know, I have, but I would long hand, you know, only so close. And so um, in the beginning, it was it was a transition because I wanted to put this shield up and I wanted to shield myself. But I had to understand that he cared, you know, and he wanted the best for me. So um, it was a process. It was definitely a process. But it also, you have to be vulnerable. You know, we talked about that family and being newly diagnosed. You have to be vulnerable. And sometimes... People think that vulnerability is a weakness and it's really a strength. It's really a strength because how can someone help you and how can someone be there for you if you won't even let them in or if you won't even allow them to understand what's going on? Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to be vulnerable and I had to communicate. This is what I need and this is what I don't need and this is what I like and this is what I don't like. And this helps me and, you know, but that also comes from me knowing what my triggers are and what helps me when I'm in the in a flare up. So that it was it was rough in the beginning, but it has gotten better. Um, he knows what triggers me. He knows, you know, the cold weather. Weather. He knows, um, you know, the death of my family members triggers me, and so he makes sure that I am always comfortable. So you want to make sure that that person that you are with, I've dated, you know, I've been in the hospital and woo -woo, no one there, you know, and these are my boyfriends. So you want to make sure that those, even friends, you want to make sure that those people that are around you and who you call a friend and best friend and boyfriend and girlfriend can understand and they can, they can be in there with you. It gets rough. It gets tough. And, and a flare up, um, it doesn't care what's going on. It doesn't care it's your birthday. It don't care if you got a trip plan. It will show up and you have to understand and make sure that that person that you are calling your friend, that person that you are calling your boyfriend, understand that as well and won't be upset and be mad because you having a flare up or a crisis. So it's been, it's been good. And I'm just truly thankful. I'm blessed. And it was a, Something that I didn't know I needed, but it ha it's, it's a blessing. So, so I seen Toya come off, and I know she. Knows <laughs> make her second, but I want to say two things. One, um, I loved the way your smile came as soon as you started talking about your husband. So I love that, um, and I know that he is an amazing, amazing man. But I think you said some really, really critical things of uh, making sure that the person you're with. Um, has your best interest at heart, that they yeah. understand um, what that flare up looks like and that they're supportive through that. And it's not like, oh man, we got to miss another this or, oh man, we couldn't make it because of this because they're a little bit more understanding because I've, ex I've experienced that where it's like yeah. you're having a real flare up <laughs> and you mad because we didn't get to go to the game. Like, well, go without me and leave me here yeah. by myself because now you make me feel bad. So it's amazing that you have that um, with your with your husband. Um, I have one um, little funny question, you know, to ask, you know, because, it's <laughs> you know, um, it does give me the right to ask a fun question of my choosing. Um, so we <laughs> in trouble the other day because he kind of posted like, you was cleaning up, you had to need a bank around, talking about some, what should I do? Am I in trouble? <laughs> no, he was not in trouble. If anybody knows, you should know Draylon by now. He played too much. <laughs> Play entirely too much all day, every day, just play. But no, he wasn't in trouble. And then um, just to piggyback off what you said and just making sure that that friend or that husband, that boyfriend, like Jordan is, I'm the type of person like, oh, no, we can still go. I'll be okay. Jordan, like, no, sit down. 
So you need that stern person to make sure that you're not pushing yourself because I'm the person that's I'm like, oh no, I'll be okay. And really not okay. And he knows, he can look at me and knows like, girl, sit down. That part, <laughs> so, that part, that, that person that'd be like, oh, you're not okay, sit down. Mm-hmm. Oh, you need, to, you need to take a load off today. Yep. Yes. Or even if you've been MIA and the text is coming in, I don't have to be in the same room with certain people they know and I'm getting text messages you good and they can just feel it. So you also need those people as well and what I call your tribe. So I see my co-host has come off mute. <laughs> just because I'm just so I just so understand how important community is. Um I, I had a friend who had a chronic illness um a few years back and you know being in her life and being a part of her journey it showed me how important it is to have a community, how you need someone, you know, like you said, when, when feeling that if that person isn't feeling well, how you can sense that and knowing Mm -hmm. that, you know, if we're at the mall or we at a restaurant and not, I can tell that you, you know, starting to to come down. Okay. It's time to go (laughs) and being okay with that. And just knowing, you know, for women in general, like I said, and I kind of wanted you to touch a little bit on different chronic illnesses, just so that people who are not aware or not educated. Um, I talk to my husband all the time. We talk about fibromyalgia and I use it as an example because my mom has it. And so mm-hmm. I refuse to um, to accept it or to speak it over my life. But I have seen some, you know, some symptoms and similarities. And I'm like, Mm-mm, we're not going to claim that. Um, but of course, being responsible, if things were to, you know, continue, I would take the proper pr- precaution. So let me let the world know that I'm I'm holy, but I'm smart at, at the same at the same time. <laughs> um, but no, just, you know, just the slight touch, you know, if you touch my legs or touch my arms mm-hmm. too hard, I'm like, stop that hurts and yeah. he don't understand he'd be thinking i'm be, i'm exaggerating you know and so just to have people recognize that these are different ailments and these ailments are real and having that community around you who understands like you said those different symptoms those different days and being able to respond in a loving way and be supportive is just amazing but can you share other chronic illnesses for those who are not educated in this area where they may not know if they need your support or not. Yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me, as you stated, um, fibromyalgia. So that's been something that I've been seeing a lot lately more in, you know, the black woman. Um, you have lupus, you have sickle cell anemia, um, endometrius, which is more so, uh, um, I don't want to say it wrong, but more so like with your cycle and things like that. Um, and then you have Crohn's, um, and you have, you have chronic migraines, you have, um, MS, sclerosis. Um, so these are different, you know, and it shows, you know, what I've been learning and what I see is it may not have the same name, but a lot of our symptoms are the same, the pain and some type of form of weather change. Um, it causes you to be in pain. Um, what else I was about to say was something else I lost my train of thought. The stress. Stress is a big one. So um, stress is causing you flare ups and things like that. So and then um, a lot of them too may you know be gen- genetic. Um, so especially like with sickle cell anemia, you know I know that is genetic. And then also um, I have a cousin who is has Crohn's. And she's my cousin, but she may not have sickle cell anemia, but she still has an autoimmune disorder. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was just making sure that you are doing um, that research in your your line and your gen- gen- genetics and things like that to see, you know, what is in your family. So when I got married, before we got married, I had Drayla make sure, you know, like get, you know, do the blood test and make sure that, you know, you don't have the traits which will cause um, us to still have a child that will either have the trait or the full-blown disease. So doing your part and making sure and doing your research and becoming educated to make sure that, you know, I'm not just out here just like, oh, you know, oop, and the child has to so anemia. Not saying that we wouldn't love them anyway, but you don't want to have that child and to know what it's like to go through and then you just was careless, you know, and children are blessings. So, you know, just making sure that you're doing your your education and things like that and your research. 
I had to pause and look to make sure because, you know, she would have came off mute again. No, but um, I do want to say this. This conversation is really, really, really good. And just for those of you who are joining us on, on social media, on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, wherever you are watching us from um, at eight o'clock, we will be on Clubhouse to resume this conversation. Um and there'll be some additional coaches that will be joining us to just talk about um, winning after diagnosis and some of the, some to, and sharing some of their experiences. So if you haven't gotten a chance to get your questions answered on Facebook, please join us on Clubhouse where we will give you an opportunity to come to the stage and talk with Elise and some of our other coaches and get your questions um, answered or just share your experience with us. Um, again, this is the Coach My Life Weekend uh, coaches conversations. This is um, an amazing opportunity to speak with our grief coach, Elise. And Coach My Life Weekend is December 3rd through the 5th. I do want to make sure that you know that it is not too late for you to register. Um, I want to make sure that you know that I have a code if you want it that gets you 50% off of general registration. <laughs> um, Elise has the code, Latoya has the code, or anyone else in the Chase Gray community and or our panelists they have the code as well. So you, we do have a special code for you that allows you to get 50% off of our general registration. If you are interested in having a one-on-one -on -one with Elise, which is you being able to have special one-on-one -on -one time with her, um, just, just to kind of maybe talk about some things with her um, and share your experiences and get some feedback and maybe even join her community, you can do that by uh, registering for the VIP. The VIP does allow you the opportunity to get a one-on-one -on -one with Elise. So I do think if that's something you're experiencing, if you're watching and you're just not ready to kind of have the conversation, you want some tips and some tricks, two things, you want to be at this conference. You want to be at this conference if you've experienced a diagnosis or even if your loved one has a diagnosis and you're trying to figure out how can I better support my loved one? What things can I do? What things should I be looking for? How can I recognize that in my loved one? I mean, at least talked about, you know, with her spouse or with her friends and being aware um, just of what a person may need or even taking the time to understand their diagnosis so that you can be aware of some of those signs. So if you want to know how do I support my loved one who has been diagnosed or how do I myself um, join a community or get some clarity or even um, how can you help me through this grief phase because I'm newly diagnosed. So if you're newly diagnosed or if you are, you know, you've been diagnosed for some time, and you're, you want to uh, have some questions answered, I urge you to come to the weekend conference where Elise will be talking about just that, changing your mindset, understanding the, the five stages of grief, and then understanding how to have that abundant life, even with your diagnosis. So I see Toya's off mute. Because I just wanted to let y'all know that I don't have the, the code. So don't reach out to me <laughs> and ask me for the code. You don't have the code. Okay, I'm no, sorry, y'all. I don't have the code. I have the code. Okay, Jazz has the code. I wish I had some Elise keys. Has the right. code, but Latoya does not. So. Okay, y'all. So listen, Toya don't have the code. I have the code. I got the keys. So if you want the keys to the conference, you want to hit me in. Any way you can. Listen, you better find me on Facebook, on, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Uh, send me a pigeon in the sky. Like, get to me <laughs> to get the code for the conference. But if you want to continue this conversation with us, please do so and join us over in Clubhouse um, in the Chase Great Room. Um, we are in Clubhouse every Wednesday, um, every Thursday. Every Saturday, we are in Clubhouse having conversations with various coaches. And on Thursday, we are talking about all things conference. And this Thursday, we're talking about winning after diagnosis. I know I'll be in the room. Latoya will be in the room. Elise will be in the room. Sandra yes. Kyle, our forgiveness coach, will be in the room. Uh, Brittany um, will be in the room. She is our marketing coach. Um, you want to make sure that you're in the room in Clubhouse because that's where the conversation that's where it gets good. That's we, where it gets we have some good. good conversations in Clubhouse. <laughs> so listen, I just want to different. It ahead. is. It is. I just want to just give a special shout out to Miss Sandra or Coach Sandra um, for sharing these um, facts. 
Thank you <laughs> with us, <laughs> um, just sharing with us, you know, the different type of autoimmune diseases and just the percentage, like how many women, 75 percent. That is a, a nice number. And so we know that, you know, we want to create this opportunity. Let me just say this really quickly, that the Coach My Life weekend was designed for women to come together. Right. We want to come together. Sometimes we think that we're the only ones going through something, right? We think mm -hmm. we're the only ones experience this. One thing that I love and I can't wait to hear more from Elise is being married and how to be a wife, how to still try to uphold those wifely responsibilities in the midst of, you know, when she is mm -hmm. feeling down, when things aren't going the way that she wants them to go. You know, I'm excited to hear about that. And these are the type of discussions that we're going to have during the Coach My Life weekend. I'm a, a wife and a mom. We're going to talk to Jay. I'm going to dig deep into Jay because her life is just a, a different dynamic than a lot of us. While she's a, a hardworking woman, you know, not having biological children, but she didn't adopt it enough of them for all of us. <laughs> um, and, you know, not being a wife, but how does that affect her? Like, I want to talk about that. And I want those type of stories to be shared so that you know that you are not the only woman experiencing yeah. some of these things. We're going to talk about rejection and how did rejection mm -hmm. make you feel as a woman? How did, you know, um, the broken mindset, if you were raised in a poverty uh, environment, if you were raised in a, in a, in a, in a environment that where there was a lot of money or there was a lot of finances, but maybe it was stingy or maybe someone was stolen from you. Like, how were you and where are you now? How can we better serve you? How can we better support you? Um, this community is designed for that. This, this weekend is designed specifically for that. So I'm encouraging you to grab, you know, your best girlfriend, gra grab your business bestie, what they call them, or your best friend in general, <laughs> and come be with us during this virtual experience so that not only you can break free, but so that mm -hmm. you can break free with other like-minded women and not feel stuck, right? I used to battle with being a mom, being a business owner, being a coach, being a wife. How do I do all of these things and still feel successful? You know, just before this, we was late because I was cooking dinner. I had to hurry up go feed these kids <laughs> before we came on this um, on this live. And it's we need to have these type of conversations because sometimes it look like we're super women. We show up on social media polished. You do not show social media when you cry, when you hurt, when you defeat it and when you be down. But if we're in this safe space where we could talk about these things mm -hmm. and help you maneuver through, you know, those those issues and those areas in your life, then guess what? We can enter 2022 winning. So yeah. th that's my two sentences. I'm for I'm done. But I'm going to talk some more <laughs> on Clubhouse. So I hope you all ready for it. That was two? Okay, I was trying to count. No, 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 no. No, listen, listen. Um, as you know, I enjoy when my partner comes uh, comes in um, and speaks. Anytime she speaks, it's always in, in a value add. So I appreciate that. I was actually astonished, too, to see that um, the majority of Americans diagnosed with an autoimmune, autoimmune disease are women, 75%. That is heavy. And it's so crazy that it's women. Um, and 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 in my mind, my analytical side is kicking in. Like, I wonder if that's because men don't go to the doctor and they just walk around carrying it without actually getting diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, in looking at that number, it's like, it's us. But 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 we are the ones that are trying to be all things to all people. Yeah. And we're the ones probably giving us the least amount of attention that we need to overcome this. So I'm super excited about this, this weekend um, and to be the concierge for this concierge for this um and to have my my partner in crime latoya but again guys listen it is 7 59 we are about to jump over to clubhouse if you would like to join us please do meet us over in clubhouse um the conference is december 3rd through the 5th 
If you would like to register, please go to coachmylife.com and register. If you want that code, I have the keys to the conference. You can get that <laughs> code from me or any of the panelists. That gets you 50% off of our general registration. If you want a one-on-one -on -one with one of the panelists, then you need to register VIP to select to have that option. But you want to be in this room. Um, if you or a loved one um, has been diagnosed, if you have experienced some betrayal, if you have had some rejection that's showing up in your life right now as an adult, if you've still not been able to overcome the mindset of your brokenness, um, if you've been, if you've had the feeling of abandonment, or if there has been some bereavement that has happened, that you just like, you know what? It's time for me to win now. It's time for me to live now. You want to be in this conference. We will see you back here on Facebook on Tuesday with another conversation with another coach. Good night. Good night.